Okay, now that we have Superbase installed in our clients that we have our account set up, we want to use Prisma locally to manage the database structure. Um, and I went back and forth on this on whether we should just use uh, plain SQL because you can just run SQL in the SQL editor and add the tables here directly. Uh, but honestly, it's a mess and not best practice at all. Uh, in any other project, um, production project, I would use Prisma uh, and you can use that to run migrations. Um, and so we have that option here as well or we could, direct, we could push directly to the database. So. Um, there's two options to run a migration. We could do Prisma DB push to push the changes automatically. Um, and that's like kind of if you were to GitHub, uh, git push origin main dash F, you would, you would overwrite whatever is there. That does, Prisma does the same thing and it'll warn you if it's about to drop some data. Um, so that is good. But if you were to change a table that already has data in it and you're going to drop a column or add a new column, it might remove all the data in that table, but it'll at least warn you first. So just be careful of that. <clears throat> so first thing we're gonna do is install Prisma. So we're gonna do npm install Prisma. Um, and be sure to do dash dash save dash dev. And that's because Prisma, there's an, <clears throat> we could use it to manage the database structure. Uh, and there's also an ORM, which we, I've used in production applications, um, in web applications to be able to query the database. So you could do like Prisma insert or Prisma git, um, but Superbase also has that functionality. So we're gonna use Superbase's functionality since we already have installed anyway. And also uh, there is the Prisma extension for Expo, but it's experimental still. And I actually did try it for this tutorial, but it is definitely not ready yet. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend it just yet at least. <clears throat> so we're just gonna use Prisma to run migrations and everything. So. We have it installed, so we're going to do Prisma, MPX Prisma init to initialize the data source. Man, I cannot spell. Data source uh, provider PostgreSQL. And PostgreSQL is the whole reason why we're using Superbase to begin with instead of Firebase because um, of the joins and everything. That It's so much more functionality using just plain SQL. Um, and then we could see that we have some setup things. So set up the database URL in that .env file. Uh, and we did that already actually. So we're ahead of schedule and then run Prisma DB pull. So this probably won't do anything. I'm sorry, MPX Prisma DB pull um, because we don't have any data there. So there's nothing to pull down just yet. Uh, so we're gonna do Prisma MPX. Prisma generate. And we can see it yells at us because we don't have anything in our schema that was created. So just a plain file. So like it's suggesting, we're going to use add our first user. Um, so we're gonna add our first user, user manually and then I'm gonna copy and paste the rest because there's a lot of tables here. So we're going to define it as an ID string. Uh, so we're going to define it by the ID and at unique. So this is our key. Uh, we want to add a username. It is also a string. It is also unique because we want it to be able to searchable. Uh, email when they sign up is also a string, also unique. Don't judge me on my spelling. And then create that. So create is super helpful on a lot of the tables um, because every time a column or a row is added or uh, or updated, we can check the date of that automatically without having to push it from the client. Um, and that's where this default now comes in. And so this is a super basic structure. Um, the suggestion says email or name. We don't really need name. And you'd also see ID auto increment. Um, and this part's a little weird because Superbase doesn't, you have to use an extension. So we'll, we'll come back to that in a second. Um, so we, first we have our model of the string, ID, username, email, and created that. Um, and we're gonna do MPX Prisma format just to clean it up and you can see it'll change. And did not change anything. What happened here? MP 
PX Prisma oh, DB DB Oh, there we go. I don't know what happened the first time. Okay, we have format and then we could do MPX Prisma DB push. And let's see, it says it cannot reach server database server. And so oh, that's what I want to do. Database server. We won't actually want to do direct URL. So actually that was a good error. Because direct URL is for migrations, database URL is for like querying data, so let's try that again. Still nothing. Okay, there we go. This was just an error on my part because I had two different files, .env and .env local. So you just need .env, and remember you could go to Superbase to get your credentials. Uh, if you forget, we can go home, we could go to connect, and we can see our database credentials right here. So you copy and paste and remember to change your password. Um, if you got the error of uh, connect connect to John Doe or Joe, John Doe, uh, that means you didn't change your password. Um, and then you can see the two different URLs for the database URL uh, and then the direct URL. And then for actual project credentials, if you wanted to go to the database, you can also see them here in general. So you can see all the information here. Just make sure you put it into your .env and name everything correctly. But if we go to the table editor, we can see now our users table with an ID, username, email, and created at. So we have our first table of user. Um, if we go to README, I added all the um, all the other tables as well. So let's go through them real quick. Actually, I'm gonna copy and paste them, and then we'll go through them. So we could just copy over that because it's the same thing. So we have user ID, username, email created at, and we have an association with videos, likes, followers, and comments and chats. And because anytime this user, IDK, whoever's logged in makes an action, so you want to track it. So this user, you could do user dot videos and it'll track, it'll query all the videos that user has posted, user.likes would query all of the likes, all the photos or all the videos that person has liked, all the followers that they have, all of the comments they made and all the chats they have. So this gives us the ability to query and get the right data that we need for each page. Uh, if we go down to video, this is where we have the DB generated auto or UUID underscore generate V4. Um, and this is where you would usually have uh, auto increment, but because we're using Supervase, we needed to use this extension um, for, actually, I don't even have it here. Perfect. Uh, so extensions equal UID OSSP. Um, and so this is a extension called, there we go. It's already enabled by default, so there's nothing you have to do in Superbase itself, but this just creates a unique identifier uh, as the ID. So every time a row is added, it becomes the key and is auto-generated. So you need a key for each table, um, and this is a good way to abstract uh, any logic from the app itself, just like created at. Um, <clears throat> and so that's what this extension that we're adding gives us the ability to use this function UUID generate version for, um, and it's a default value when you add to the row. So once we run this migration, we don't have to do anything from the client side. And then we go down to video. Each video has a title, a URI, which is the URL of the storage bucket that we're going to use, the user ID, uh, and then and this is important because we use this on a lot of things. Uh, the user, this is how we associate videos to a user. 
So first we have to make the association here of user ID. So from the client side, we would post that user ID in the user ID field. And then that association gets connected. So let's say if you were to put a random string in the user ID, that insert would fail uh, because that user ID needs to exist as an ID here. Uh, and then that's where you get the ability to do user.videos and get all the videos that that user has posted. So you should see it, it references the user ID field here and the ID field of user up here. And then on delete, this cascade means that if you delete a user, it'll also delete all the associated videos in the database. And if you don't do that, you could run into a ton of problems because you're assuming in the application that each video has a user associated with it. Uh, I don't think there's any scenario you'd want a user or a video posted without a user uh, because that user was deleted for some reason or another. Um, and then also we have like. So this video has how many likes. So that's how we would be able to see that track the likes of each video, uh, when that video was added, and then how many comments that video has. Uh, interesting. I don't know why I put comments as a lowercase or uppercase. Comments, comments. Okay, and then actually, let's add likes. Okay, so this is plural because it's an array of videos, array of likes. I'm sure everything's right now. Comments. Okay, comment. So this references the comment model. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, and then we have likes. We have the same user generated item. This user ID is the person that's liking the video, and then the video ID of the person that's the actual ID of the video. And then this is something I added a little later on, video user ID. And this was the ability to track, like if you go to someone's profile, they in TikTok, they give you the ability to see how many likes total that person has received on all this video. So this makes it easy to get that value of like count how many video rows likes that this person has and just display that in the profile. Uh, again, we have created at defaults now uh, and then followers. I think followers was the most confusing part. I wouldn't say complicated because there's only five rows here or 40 rows actually. Um, but because the, because the, uh, the concept of friends, uh, we're just using followers to, to make this association. So let's say I follow someone, I'm just a follower if they don't follow me back, but once they follow me back, then I'm a friend, but that would be two rows in the follower database. And then we have to associate those two rows together to make, sh to, to indicate to the app that they are friends. So that one, that was a complex one that we'll come back to. Um, and then comments. We have user, again, video ID, video, video user ID, text of the comments itself, and then chat. So we have user ID. So a lot of these are, are kind of copy and paste. And so we have this concept of user association on each one. Um, and then user's key. So this one's different because user's key is the ability to create a chat room. So you don't want to be able to create a chat with just a bunch of people. You just want to be between two people. So this user's key is essentially on the front end where we're taking each user's ID, sorting it, so it's always in the, in the right order, and then turning it into a string so we could, like, we could create the real-time channel or database on that key. And so that's our database. So if we were to add all that, and let's see if we get any errors on this one, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, the extension property is only available for Postgres extension preview. Oh, one more thing we need to add. Preview features. Um, and then this is only because we're using Superbase Postgres, or else you wouldn't have to add this. Your PostgreSQL extensions. Let's see if I think. This is a problem with doing this live. I always misspell everything. 
Oh, sweet. Worked. Okay. So, I actually copy and paste this in the documentation because we made a few changes. And if we go back to our table editor, we could see all of our tables, chat, comment, follower, like. It's very slow. Video. Hopefully it's not that slow in production. Um, and there we go. There's our our Prisma table. Um, and you can see, like I put also, if you want to add tables manually, this is essentially what Prisma is doing. It's creating the SQL directly create table user of ID, primary key, username, <clears throat> and all the associations. And so in the next episode, we're going to go over how to actually query our, our database. So actually maybe we'll, we'll do auth next. Um, and then once you're authenticated, then you'll be able to insert into the database because we don't want any, just anyone be able to insert in the database. We want only authenticated users. So actually we're gonna do authenticated authentication next.